Hello everyone, welcome back to multi-channel YouTube services and entertainments. This is a full video testing and reviewing and who to use typewriter. This model made in England in 1972. SCM Smith Corona Super G. Serial number 111788. It's my first time using this typewriter. I apologize for any spelling mistakes or bad review I did in this video. Please support our channel. Subscribe. Like. Share. Thank you and we hope you enjoy watching this video. Let's take a look to this beautiful machine. In this video, review testing and how to use, and what this typewriter can do. This is information history about this typewriter. This typewriter was made, in 1972. Carriage on a standing start from the left margin to the first tabulator stop. We then converted this into the equivalent of a standing quarter of a mile. The result is that the SCM Smith Corona GT gear achieved an amazing standing quarter mile in only 26.2 minutes. Speed and accuracy. The construction of the whole typewriter is very flimsy and after the Empire Corona self-destructed on us we decided to go a little more gently with this one as the mechanics are the same. One thing that should be mentioned is that the machine has a few sharp edges and corners on it so a little care has to be exercised and a packet of first aid plasters kept handy is not a bad idea. Yes and we managed over this for short bursts and over 3 minute RSA and LCC speed and accuracy tests from the 1960s. An office typewriter or a decent quality portable would not have these problems. Even with with a 5 WPM penalty we managed 80 to 90 WPM. In the real world, of course, I doubt if any of us ever did more than 40 WPM except perhaps on a Friday morning so we could leave work early and get a head start on the weekend. It is a very noisy machine and has a ringing sound to it. It needs the loud bell at the end of the line. It is a bit like a motorcycle with holes knocked in the silence to make a loud noise. The noise increases as the carriage moves from left to right when typing. It does have a nice keyboard and a light positive feel to it. It is, however, a no-go showboat. Looks nice but performs poorly when compared to most other portable typewriters. Very popular with collectors of memorabilia but not one for the typewriter collector perhaps. They are not rare and although on eBay these sometimes sell for eye-watering amounts you should be able to pick a midweek one up for the £20 mark. Be careful though if you want one, they damage and mark very easily. Good enough for occasional use but make sure you get a little used one like the test machine. There are a lot of them about so don't get involved in a weekend bidding bun fight. They are like London buses, there will always be another one along in a minute. Smith Corona is an American manufacturer of thermal labels, direct thermal labels, and thermal ribbons used in warehouses for primarily barcode labels. Once a large U.S. typewriter and mechanical calculator manufacturer, it expanded aggressively during the 1960s to become a broad-based industrial conglomerate whose products extended to paints, foods, and paper. The mechanical calculator sector was wiped out in the early 1970s by the production of cheap electronic calculators. And the typewriter business collapsed in the mid-1980s due to the introduction of PC-based word processing. 
Smith Corona addressed this by manufacturing word processing typewriters such as PWP1400 model. Its competitors were Brother, Olivetti, Adler, Olympia and IBM. In late 2010, Smith Corona entered the industrial ribbon and label market. The company no longer manufactures typewriters or calculators, but does manufacture large quantities of barcode and shipping labels and thermal ribbons used in thermal transfer printers. Their facility is in Cleveland, Ohio. Smith Corona now competes with distributors of Zebra Technologies supplies, packaging companies like Uline and various other private companies. The company originated in 1886, when the Smith Premier Typewriter Company was established by Lyman C. Smith and his brothers Wilbert, Monroe, and Pearlbutt. The typewriter was the first to use a double keyboard, but it was not the first typewriter that typed both upper and lower case characters. That honor belonged to the Remington No. 2 that was introduced in 1877-78, a decade before the first model of the Smith Premier was placed on the market. The advertisements boasted that there was a key for every character. In 1889, the Smith Premier, the first typewriter to bear the Smith name, was manufactured in Lyman C. Smith's gun factory on South Clinton Street in Syracuse, New York. Alexander T. Brown, an employee, invented the machine, and Wilbert Smith financed the construction of the prototype. Union Typewriter Company. Edit. During 1893, Smith joined with the Union Typewriter Company, a trust in Syracuse which included rival firms Remington, Calligraph, Densmore and Yoast. Not long after, Union took action and blocked the Smith Premier Typewriter Company from using the new front strike design, which allowed typists to see the paper as they typed. As a result, the Smith brothers quit in 1903 and founded L. C. Smith and Bros Typewriter Company. The new company soon released the L. C. Smith and Bros Model No. 2, which was an odd beginning because, a full year later, they released the L.C. Smith & Bros Model No. 1. Carl Gabrielson invented both models. In 1906, the Rose Typewriter Company of New York City marketed the first successful portable typewriter. They were bought out by Smith in 1909, renamed Standard Typewriter Company, and moved upstate to Groton, New York. With the success of their Corona model in 1914, Standard Typewriter Company was renamed again and became the Corona Typewriter Company. Smith Corona was created when L. C. Smith & Bros united with Corona Typewriter in 1926, with L. C. Smith & Bros making office typewriters and Corona Typewriter making portables. Thank you so much for watching please support our channel. Subscribe, like, share, and all the best. Smith Corona Super G. Serial hash sign 7YP100715. C.1972. Smith Corona Super G cover. Smith Corona Super G. Debuting in 1970, the Super G was an answer to Olivetti's Valentine. Designed by noted automotive designer Rear, the Super G sports rubber tire treads instead of feet, racing stripes on the clamshell cover, and the ear logo. Mechanically, it's just a British-made late model Skywriter with some additional features, like power spacing. Something that I have not yet seen brought up by other collectors is the idea that the Super G name may have a double meaning. On the surface, the G would seem to stand for ear. But given Smith Corona's history of naming typers after trains and planes, Cipher, Clipper, and the more generic Skywriter, I wonder if Super G is not a hidden reference to the Lockheed Super G L1049G constellation. I personally think that it may be some anonymous designer's nod to the constellation's designer, 
the legendary skunk works founder Clarence Kelly Johnson. If I were a young designer, I'd have idolized him, wouldn't you? It's debatable whether to include this full keyboard up strike here, under the Mingtons, or in a class by itself. The Smith Premier Typewriter Co. and Smith Corona were not corporately related. It was invented by an L.C. Smith & Bros. employee, Alexander Brown, who felt he could improve upon the Shoals and Glyden. After the company folded in the early 1900s, the Smith Premier name was purchased by Mington, which continued to sporadically apply the name to their own machines. Since this machine was born in L.C. Smith's factory, and presumably was the stimulus for them to enter the typewriter business later on, I'm going to categorize it here. As the grandfather of all things Smith Corona, Notice that the NO.1 single quote S on 8, nickel plated sides are gone, replaced by plain, pinstriped sheet metal. The strange double spacey bar arrangement has also been consolidated down to a single, center spacey bar. LC Smith number 5, serial number 190107-5, 1916, LC Smith number 5, LC Smith number 8. Serial hash sign S319018-8 and 445347 8 1918-1923. 1918-LC Smith number 8. 1923-LC Smith number 8. Although both of these number 8s were built prior to LC Smith's merger with Corona. Both bear the LZ Smith and Corona typewriter co name. This is because they were rebuilt after the merger and given new decals bearing the new company name. Just an example of how appearances can be deceiving. The top machine was actually rebuilt at least twice once by the typewriter cleaning and rebuilding company, and again by the American typewriter company. At some point, it ended up being sold to the father of a teenage girl at a shop in Rochester, MN. Corona number 3. Serial number 439895. 1921. This little cutie is pulled and folded down and over the keyboard to fit in its case. With over 700,000 built between 1912 and 1940, it was and remains a very popular machine. It was frequently copied by competitors, resulting in a number of patent infringement lawsuits. When the number 4 was introduced in 1924, Corona began offering $50 rebates on the number 3 and produced a line of specials which came in red, green, and blue. There are several minor variations of the number 3. The very earliest have individually hung tippet bars, while later ones have a traditional slotted segment. The very very early ones are labeled Standard Typewriter Company, as the company did not change its name to Corona until 1914. Around 1923, the improved number 3 added a set of right-hand shift keys and a widened pulton. The improved model also did away with the 3 designation on the front. The very last iteration, the one that may be of most interest to the collector besides the pre-1914 model, was the XCXCD model. The X model added two more keys, for a total of 30. The XC allowed the operator to configure any one of four special keys to be dead, and the XCD came with all four of the keys dead by default. It may be a very common machine but its ingenious design and historical significance should give it a place in every typewriter enthusiast's collection. Corona 4 
1924, Emeritus Collection. 1924 was the first year of production for the four. Either this machine was made before the company's merger with L.C. Smith, or machines continued to bear the old Corona typewriter company label for a short time. Download the manual for this typewriter here. Corona 4. Serial hash sign B1P09939. 1929. 1929 Corona 4. Both Corona 4s and Corona 3 specials were available in at least 12 different DuPont Ducco color schemes. This one is in channel blue. Shannon L. Johnson has an excellent page on Ducco Coronas. Download the manual for this typewriter here. Smith Corona. Serial hash sign S1004131S, 1020186 and 1020861. 1931 and 1932. Sterling Silver Smith Corona Sterling. Smith Corona Proto Sterling. Smith Corona Proto Standard. Smith Corona introduced the new flat top design in November 1931 with an unprecedented promotional campaign. More about that in a bit. These very early versions have a medallion of the Smith Corona logo embedded in the ribbon cover, and the ribbon cover itself is completely removable. By 1933, the medallion had been omitted and the ribbon cover hinged in back, although the name remained generic for a short while. For the first few years, there were two versions, both called simply Smith Corona, the only significant difference being that one had a tab feature and the other did not. They came in black, red, green, and, in a few special cases, silver. The name honored the first new portable produced after the 1926 merger of L.C. Smith and Corona and was designed to look like a combination of Corona's portables and L.C. Smith's standards. Though both versions of the model were officially known as the Sterling, in 1934 the tabbed and non-tabbed versions were split into their own models, the Sterling and the Standard. The company wanted to make a splash with their new Sterling model. They commissioned the Home Silver Company to jacket a limited number of bodies in Sterling Silver for a window display package for dealer showrooms. These displays would consist of the silver typewriter, a silver background screen of tin foil and wood, display cards, floor covering, and a glass display case for inside the showroom. The package was available to dealers for $127.50, a good price considering that the silver machine itself was given a list price of $125. Initially, the typewriter and display were to be gold, but as they were designing the new model, countries began to drop the gold standard. At the same time, a run on Federal Reserve notes depleted the US gold reserves and created a panic in the banking industry. Gold was suddenly a lot less appealing. So Smith Corona switched their scheme to silver. Initially, they planned for 175 silver models, but within two weeks of making initial contact with dealers across the country, the factory was swamped with 350 dealer orders for the display alone. Evidently, the company adjusted their order and came up with slightly, for a 1984 letter from James Sherrill, VP of Operations at Smith Corona, states that a total of 184 silver units were produced. So why have only a fraction of these already rare sterling silver sterling survived? Perhaps it was the rather mind-boggling selling point the company salesman made to dealers to entice them to purchase the window display package. The wholesale price of the silver model, they pointed out, was about the same as the list price of the regular model. If the silver unit did not sell, they could simply replace the silver housing with a regular one and sell the machine at normal price. Then take the silver body to a silversmith for the market price of the silver and recoup most of the cost of the display. It's likely that many of the silver bodies were melted down. That also means that there may be regular looking flat tops out there with S serial numbers that once were silver. Smith Corona. Serial number 1042986. 1933. A variation of the early flat top model I call the Proto Sterling. The ribbon cover medallion is now gone and the cover itself has a fixed hinge in the rear. This 
first-tabbed version of the Smith Corona would be christened the Sterling the following year. Corona 4 improved. 1935. Serial number 1 of 5081. Corona 4 improved. In late 1934, Smith and Corona modernized up the 4 with a redesign that brought it in line with the flat top style that was becoming the company's hallmark. The machine was basically the same as the old 4, save for the shell and improvements in the keylever mechanisms underneath. Though the front is labeled only 4, company serial number lists call this model the 4 improved. Valentine ad? Detail from a highly misleading deck. 1934 ad showing the four improved and junior click to see the whole ad at the same time the company introduced the junior a stripped down economy model that shared the same housing as the four improved unity of appearance was probably one reason that the four and junior utilized a common shell economy was probably another for unknown reasons the 4 improved lasted only a short time, perhaps not even a year. Sometime in 1935, the original 4 reappeared and the improved serial number sequence was assigned to the junior. Altogether, only about 10,000 of these flat top 4s were made, making it one of the most collectible Smith Coronas. The 4 improved sold for $45. Corona Standard Serial hash sign 1C35598 1935 Emeritus Collection The basic model we saw earlier, now with a name, the standard Corona Sterling Serial hash sign 1824212 1936 Corona Junior Serial hash sign 1 of 14675J 1936 a low-cost portable for the Depression era, the Junior was made from 1934 to 1940. It shared the same housing as the Corona 4 improved, but lacked most of the 4's features. It has no left-hand button knob, carriage centering lever, ribbon selector switch, paper alignment slider, character scale, backspace, or margin release. In 1937, the Modless was added to the line. Corona Junior, Modless. Serial number 1 of 27775 JS. 1938. Virtually identical to the original Junior, the Modless features the addition of a backspace key. LC Smith Super Speed Silent. Serial hash sign S1450026 1238. LC Smith Super Speed Silent. The Super Speed Silent was the top of the line model for Smith Corona in 1938. Behind the body panels are heavy slabs of sound deadening felt. Note the right hand carriage return lever. From the early single quote 20s, Smith Corona offered its standards with either left or right hand returns. It's very unusual to see a right hand return installed as late as 1938. There are also two brass stops installed beneath the period and comma keys. The stops allow the keys to depress barely far enough to kiss the paper. I've heard of others having these stops, and I think it must have been an improvised solution to the problem of those two keys punching through the paper. It's likely that this diaper came from the old Winona, MN, courthouse, as its previous owner was a legal secretary there from the 1930s until the 1950s. LC Smith Super Speed. Serial number 1,452,332-11. 1, LC Smith Super Speed. This was a teaching typewriter. All of the letter keys are blank, so the student would have no choice but to memorize the keyboard layout. The blanks, however, are just black plastic or celluloid inserts. The letters are present underneath. The inserts have cracked and come off of a few of the keys, revealing the letters. Remember I mentioned the unusually late right hand return on the super speed silent above. These two super speeds were manufactured very closely together, probably only about 2-1, 2 weeks apart in late 1938. Just goes to show that you can't assume anything about production standards for any particular period in time.
just goes to show that you can't assume anything about production standards for any just goes to show that you can't Smith Corona Super G Serial hash sign 7YP100715 C.1972 Smith Corona Super G cover Smith Corona Super G Debuting in 1970, the Super G was an answer to Olivetti's Valentine. Designed by noted automotive designer Ria, the Super G sports rubber tire treads instead of feet, racing stripes on the clamshell cover, and the ear logo. Mechanically, it's just a British-made late-model Skywriter with some additional features, like power spacing. Something that I have not yet seen brought up by other collectors is the idea that the Super G name may have a double meaning. On the surface, the G would seem to stand for you. But given Smith Corona's history of naming typers after trains and planes, Ziffer, Clipper, and the more generic Skywriter, I wonder if Super G is not a hidden reference to the Lockheed Super G L1049G constellation. I personally think that it may be some anonymous designer's nod to the constellation's designer, the legendary Skunk Works founder Clarence Kelly Johnson. If I were a young designer, I'd have idolized him, wouldn't you? they typed. As a result, the Smith brothers quit in 1903 and founded L. C. Smith & Bros Typewriter Company. The new company soon released the L. C. Smith & Bros Model No. 2, which was an odd beginning because, a full year later, they released the L. C. Smith & Bros Model No. 1. Carl Gabrielson invented both models. In 1906, the Rose Typewriter Company of New York City marketed the first successful portable typewriter. They were bought out by Smith in 1909, renamed Standard Typewriter Company, and moved upstate to Groton, New York. With the success of their Corona model in 1914, Standard Typewriter Company was renamed again and became the Corona Typewriter Company. Smith Corona was created when L. C. Smith and Bros united with Corona Typewriter in 1926. With L. C. Smith and Bros making office typewriters and Corona Typewriter making portables. Thank you so much for watching. Please support our channel. Subscribe, like, share, and all the best.